Today, I'm going to show you how I have my soundboard set up in VR so you can use it exactly how I do in my videos. First off, this tutorial is for Steam PC VR only, and there's no way to use a soundboard standalone on Quest or any standalone VR headset. So if you have a PC and a VR headset, the only thing you need to do that's not covered in this tutorial is connect it to Steam VR, which is super easy and there's already a ton of tutorials online on how to do that. Alright, step one is to download the smartboard. Smoreboard is my soundboard software and you can download it completely for free at smoreboard.com or just go to the link in my description where I'll have links to all the other stuff I'll use in this tutorial. And after that, the next thing you're going to need to do is go into Steam and download Desktop Plus. So just search Desktop Plus and then you would download right here. It's completely free. I'll just download that and get that ready. The next thing you're going to need to download is OpenVR2 Key. Now this is not on Steam, so I'll have a link to it in the description. This is a link to a GitHub where you can download the software for free. So to download it, download the zip right there. I already have it downloaded. Once it's downloaded, you want to go and extract it. So you right click, click extract all, and extract, and then I already have it extracted. So once you have it extracted, you want to go back to Steam, and you want to click on add a game here at the bottom left. And after that, click add a non-Steam game. And once it's done, click browse, then go to wherever you had OpenVR2 key extracted and click on the EXE to add it. Then add selected programs. So once you have it added, you're going to right click on it and go to properties. Then make sure you include it in your VR library. The next thing you're going to do is start Steam VR. Alright, then after Steam VR is fully up and running, you're going to want to open OpenVR2 key. It should appear here like this. Then you're going to go into Steam, uh, click on this thing, whatever this thing is called. Go to settings, go to startup, shutdown, click choose startup overlay apps. You want to make sure. OpenVR2 key and Desktop Plus are on startup instantly. That way you don't have to mess with them, they just work. Next, to send the smartboard audio into any VR game, go to the audio tab in Steam VR settings, change audio input device from headset to manual, and change this to cable output. Then in the smartboard, go into the audio tab, and then you want to set your headphones to whatever headphones your uh, VR headset is using. So if you're using the Valve Index, you want to set the Valve Index speakers. And for me, I'm using the Big Screen Beyond, so that I would choose the speakers Beyond audio strap. In your microphone, you want to pick your headset microphone, which for me is the microphone beyond, but if you're probably using a Valve Index or something like that, you set this microphone to whatever microphone your headset uses. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to get the smart board on your arm just like this. So you're going to want to open your Steam menu and then go over to Desktop Plus, it should be here right next to your desktop things. And uh, this will all be empty for you. I have three desktops here just to make sure my recording software and stuff is working. But what you want to do is click on Add Overlay, and then you have two different options you can do. You can do Window, and you can select um, the smartboard directly, or you can pick Desktop. If you have extra monitors like me, it's better to have the smartboard on its own dedicated monitor. Using Windowed Mode can cause issues. For example, if I make a Window Overlay, select the smartboard, and I try to open up Settings on it, you can see I can't see it. It's confusing because I can't click. That's just because window mode is only selecting the smartboard window. It's not selecting the settings window that opens up. So you can't adjust settings or anything using window mode. So I recommend using desktop mode. But if you don't have any extra monitors, just get everything set up beforehand and window mode will work. So it's up to you. I'm just going to use desktop for this tutorial. Then just get it lined up physically where you want it to be with your arm. I want it to be like about there. It's like I usually put more like in my elbow. Then you select the so plus, select the overlay, whichever one you're using. Click properties. And then you want to change it to the origin from play area. It's kind of hard to see, but to left controller. And that'll be attached to your controller, or you can use right controller if you're using that. Because from here, you can just change the size. Don't use the um, drag mode, because that detaches it from your arm. So yeah, it's simple, super simple. You should be able to play sounds on it. Uh, you will notice if you close the Steam menu, you can't play any sounds on it. But that's just something of Desktop Plus. When you open up any game, it works then. I don't know why they would disable it now, but they did, so. Now I'm going to show you how to bind buttons on your VR controllers to keys on your keyboard. So you can do things like play specific sound effects by just pressing a button on your controller. All right, so go back to your desktop with Steam VR open and make sure you grab your controllers. I'm using the Knuckles controllers for this, but it'll also work on Quest controllers. Now, to open the OpenVR2 key app, click on the hidden icons button down here. Then find the OpenVR2 key icon and click on it. And this will allow you to see the software. So you'll see it uses a uh, key O1, L2. Each of these correlate to a button. So to figure out which button it is, just press the button on the controller and you'll see it appear here. And there is some glitches with the application. Sometimes it'll say active input blocked here and you just gotta press the button to your controller so eventually it'll start working. So you can literally bind anything you want to it. So you just find for, so my, I use the uh, right controller B to stop all sounds. And that is R13. So I'd find R13 in this list here. And then I like to use Q. So you click on it, so you press your keyboard, whatever key you want to use. You click again, and now it's set to that. So anytime you press this button, I can show it here on notes. So anytime I'm pressing a button on my controller, you can see it brings it up here. So you can use that in the smart board to bind, bind sound effects and stuff. Or you can use it for the stop all sounds, which is what I use this one for. So. 
yeah, it's pretty simple to use. This isn't my application, so there are a few bugs. For the most part, it works pretty well. Every once in a while, you have to just restart it, but it's pretty good. Now, before you go off and use this in games or whatever, please do not be annoying with it. For example, if you have the loudest sound you can find, max out all the volume in the scoreboard, and join the lobby and start spamming it, you're probably going to get kicked, because that's just annoying. So don't be annoying. Make sure the sounds you're using aren't too loud and stuff like that, and don't spam stuff. If you use the scoreboard and like it, please consider getting pro. The scoreboard is completely free to download and use, but it is not free for me. So if you want to help support me, as well as get a ton of extra features, get pro. It's pretty cool. Also, subscribe.